For the last couple of days, people have been asking me my opinion on what happened with Mary J. Blige and her jackass husband, Kendu Isaacs. And, um, you know, I usually don't really have much interest in celebrity nonsense. Uh, I just just don't you know it's to me they're just people they just happen to have a job that's a lot in the public eye however with Mary J Blige's history and her connection to women uh, who have been in abusive relationships and really struggled with low self-esteem and um, codependency and all, a lot of other kind of emotional entanglements she seemed to be a really good example to uh, to use to discuss some issues that get black women caught up in nonsense and not just black women I mean any woman who's got something going on is likely to fall prey to what happened to Mary J so I wanted to let you know my opinion on that okay so the first time I heard about Mary J Blige was in the early 90s and uh, she came out with her album called what's the 411 i will never forget it uh the sister was banging i mean she had like a totally different style uh and, and then in the early 90s all the the girls and the female uh, artists involved in the hip-hop music world all dressed like um i don't know like some thuggets or something they all had the hats and they had the you know the heavy boots and the baggy clothes and it was really hard to tell the female uh, musicians from the males that trend kind of faded out after a while and the women got more uh, more feminized in their attire and at this point you know Mary J just looks like a diva so she made a full transition uh, in that way in her fashion sense she also went through a lot of changes emotionally and she was very open about it you know very public about her battles with drug addiction and alcoholism um, and her uh, low self-esteem which she attributed to battling the demons from her childhood of child sexual abuse and neglect abandonment and a bunch of other uh, emotional traumas that she suffered as a matter of fact I remember hearing something reading something about her mother surviving a knife attack by some boyfriend or something I'm sure it's probably online it just came to me I haven't really had time to look it up because I'm already in the middle of making the video it's too late now but what bothers me the most is that this dude came onto the scene and I, nobody can ever tell me that he didn't get with her with the full intent to use her up for every single thing that she got. How can I say that? Well, number one, the motherfucker's a Leo, like me. One thing I know is Leo men, they ain't shit. Okay, so you, you know, the ones who are, are just few and far between. But the majority of them are opportunists and sociopaths. And that's why I don't even fuck with them. You know, I'm a Leo woman and I don't fuck with Leo men. I just, you just don't because they're just too much so she gets herself hooked up with this with this opportunist and uh he comes on you know at first you know because the things you heard about him at first were really good you know they got together i don't know what 2002 three one something but anyway i know they got married in 2003 i believe it was but um you know at first he's coming off to her really nice and you know he's like um i had some quotes from uh an interview she did in People magazine in 2007 and uh, she says that uh, when I first he got we met when I hated men she was 36 at the time he was 38 and uh, he said Mary I've got something to tell you that's gonna hurt but it will help you heal guys didn't ever talk to me like that you're scarred inside he said it's like you have a cut and it's infected you have to let me put proper medicine on it so it can heal and bam there you go the rap was laid and her being you know he found somebody who was in a condition that was weak 
that was needy, that was confused. She was wounded. She was hurt. And she didn't really know what to do. She had no kids. She had a dysfunctional relationship with a dysfunctional mother. Essentially, she was all alone. She had no backup. She was a perfect victim. A per- no backup, insecure, unaware, lost in a world of drugs and alcohol. And, you know, just like, just like a victim just waiting to be snatched up. So that's what he did. And nobody can ever tell me different. I mean, the reason why, because I would, you know, when you come at a woman with some bullshit like this, okay, you are not positioning yourself to heal. You say, we're going to get you some therapy. You put her in the hands of a professional who's qualified to do it. When niggas talk like this, ladies, that is game. And you need to recognize it and put your barriers up. And, you know, unfortunately, She says, um, you know, she had turned to drugs and alcohol to cope with the pain from her abusive upbringing. The relationship I was in was so terrible, I had a gun to my face, she says. At that point, I said to myself, there's something wrong with me. Guys don't want to stick around because they're ashamed of me. Ouch, that gives me the chills right now. Okay, so see, she's internalizing the mistreatment that she suffered at the hands of these beastie men and blaming herself that's another sign of very low self-esteem of a codependent woman and a woman who really is just really has no strength to to uh to ward off an onslaught of a get master gamesman like this dude is okay so the way he was coming at her just spilled games from day one but she was in such a state that she didn't really recognize it for what it was so, but she says, you know, she treated him so bad before a while because I never experienced real love before. I was suspicious. It seemed too good to be true. Okay, so she recognized that. That little voice inside of her told her this is some bullshit, but she didn't listen. Why didn't she listen? Probably because she was all alone and she felt that, you know, this she wanted to believe that it was true she wanted to have somebody to love her because it's something that she never really had before she wanted to have somebody in her corner to have her back i mean everybody wants that most of us have it though but she never did and so he came along and you know pretended to be offering it and she bit hook line and sinker so she says he stayed by my side eventually she learned to let go I remember laying on the bed with my head on his chest. I decided to stop drinking that night and forgive all the people who had hurt me and to forgive and love myself because I loved him and I wanted to be true. So then they moved into her estate in New Jersey with his two youngest kids from his, you know, ex-wife. So she's, you know, basically supporting him and his two children all those years. And, uh, you know, he, but he just took advantage of the situation. Now, at some point, um, he maneuvered things so that he became her manager. Mistake. Okay, he evidently was supposed to have been some, you know, manager, talent scout, some bullshit uh, kind of thing. You know how niggas are when they in the quote industry and they got a business card. That don't mean shit. Who you manage? How much money did they make? How many times was they on the Billboard Top 100? Let's talk about that. How about Top 10? What you doing? But you know, he, she already had established herself as a success. And she had no reason to bring him on her ride. She should have stayed with her professionals. And instead, she got with this knucklehead. And honey, everything in her life went downhill from there. She felt like she was getting um, some benefits from it uh, mentally and emotionally. But in reality, it was just a setup. So then along comes Los Angeles Confidential Magazine a couple of years later. So she's talking. And the guy, it was really interesting how he... Um, you know, this, the way that he set the story up, he, she was saying how um, the molestation happened when she was five. And uh, she says it only happened once that I remember. But after that, there was so much else in my childhood that happened. So many dark moments, which all added up. And that's what sprung me on the drug addiction, trying to numb it all with the drugs, the subsequent depression, the lack of love for myself, the lack of people loving me, the abandonment issues, daddy not being there, mommy not knowing how to handle it all. And although she loves you, she abandoned you at some point, too. So you see what I mean? This was a woman who was really struggling uh, to to just to just to live, and this guy comes along, 
and Caesar. So then in, in uh, the page six entertainment magazine, I found some more, another interview. And um, in it, they start to break the story into 12, 2012 rather, that Kendu Isaacs had a girlfriend. And it was this little protege that uh, Mary J had gotten uh, named Star Shell. And um, she signed her to her label, which, of course, you know, since Ken Du Isaacs is her manager, he has a lot to do with the artists of the label as well. So people were saying that everybody knew Mary was the last to know. And they were like, well, how could you not know? Well, did you tell her? If you didn't tell her, how the fuck is she supposed to know? And um, it says, you know, it was really low how they did it to her that way and had it not been for mary signing her investing time and money because nobody cared about her music one of the sources is quoted as saying mary j claims in the court papers from their divorce filing which she finally got fed up with his ass and filed for divorce in july of 2016 she claims that he spent more than four hundred and twenty thousand dollars on that girl and um that you know that they were always out i mean people would see them out but this is what her lawyer said and this is the part that kills me allegations that have been made about kendu are false unfair mean-spirited and sad the court can deal with it if it's relevant he's a very pleasant guy sociopaths usually are he's not abusive he's not the one going to the press his goal is to reach an amicable solution with her and have this commentary cease and desist it doesn't help any of them it's misleading And this is where he puts the knife in her chest. He cares about Mary. He wants her to do well. Okay, what part of wanting her to do well is it to to embezzle her money and spend it on some bitch, cheat on your wife, lie to her, and then have the nerve to, when you get to court, now you the one did the wrong stuff that's leading to the divorce, but then you get to court and you want to have the nerve to talk about um, getting over $100,000 a month in spousal support and let me tell you what else this loser did okay now he's supposed to be her manager right they got married 2003 in 2009 um they had new they got evicted from apartment in the upper west side of new york city manhattan they were supposed to be paying nine to twelve thousand dollars a month it wasn't getting paid She had to deal with some copyright infringement lawsuits that cost her $1 million a year to fight. And then she got a tax lien from the the state of New Jersey for almost a million dollars. They faced a lawsuit for not paying $2.2 million personal loan, repaying that. The bank wanted their money plus $58,000 in interest. And then in 2013... Uh, the IRS filed a $3.4 million, $3. million tax lien against her. And then in 2016, they reported that the um, New Jersey put a lien of $166,292.77 on her. She had already settled the previous nine, you know, almost $1 million. But this was an additional amount, $166,292.77. Okay, so where is that good management? Where is that wanting her to do well? You fuck it up. You're costing her money. You're not handling business. So all of that, that's nothing that should have been happening. Okay, so moving on. Um, okay, so they have a separation date technically of July 25th, 16. Um, he didn't pay taxes. He embezzled money. He cheated on his wife. And he did everything he could to hurt her. But you think that's the worst of it? There's more. Okay, so then she was on with Angie Martinez. Y'all know Angie. And she decided, that's what she decided to spill the beans about what was going on in the, uh, in the marriage and why she filed for a divorce. So Angie asked her, um, I'm trying to find it in my notes here. Angie asked her, where did I write it? Excuse me, I'm taking, I'm uh, looking at my notes. Oh, here it is. Okay. So, um, you know, Angie asked her, um, how did she know that, the, you know, when did she decide that it was over? When was the moment when she knew that the relationship was over? Mary, this is a quote from Mary J. The overwhelming disrespect 
you're too familiar. You're way too familiar and you're disrespecting me. And I know I can sense that I'm not what you want anymore because now you're starting to throw questions around like, okay, why don't you cook? Well, I've never been cooking. Well, why don't you wear your hair like this? I never wore my hair like this before. What's up with you? You know, so then she says that she figured out that he was no longer emotionally invested in marriage and he was also physically absent. So, you know, she realized, you know, this man just doesn't want you. He's just gone all the time. You're by yourself in a relationship. And when you realize you're by yourself in a relationship and you're just suffering, suffering through it, it's time to do some investigating. And that's what she did. You know, she figured out what was happening and then she filed for a divorce. Okay, so this goes, you know, this is like a message to a lot of women who think, well, you know, I'm going to try to save my marriage. I'm going to try to work it out. I'm going to do this and that. Okay, when you have a man talking to you like that, there's nothing to work out. That's what I keep trying to get you guys to understand. You want to stick around and you want him to tell you with words that the relationship is over. And I keep telling you that men tell you in actions. Their behavior will show you everything you need to know about how he feels about you and how he feels about the relationship. This dude was was like out the picture for the longest, but he stuck around because of the financial benefits that being with Mary J afforded him. How do I know that? Because, you know, you can find out the net worth of these stars. They have websites where, you know, because they file taxes and they, you know, stuff. So their information is pretty open. So her net worth is estimated uh, to be anywhere between 10 and 45 million. Because there was like several different websites and they said different things. So it's somewhere in that range. His is no more than $4.5 million. Now, upon this divorce, they go to court, right? Dude is asked for $129,000 a month in spousal support. After you cheated, after you cost her money for tax penalties, you know, and interest, after you didn't do anything that you were supposed to do, how her career like came to a standstill, you didn't do shit to get her, you know, back out there and, and really doing stuff. I don't remember calling seeing any great grand and wonderful things that he did. And I think it's just too much to have your mate in a situation like that handling your money. You should have a professional business and you should sign all checks. If you're ever in a business and you have a manager, don't let them sign your checks and don't let them be in charge of your money. You sign every check and you need to know exactly what the, mo- you know, what the money is going for. And you really shouldn't have, they shouldn't have access to all your money. There should be an operating account that you put a certain amount of money in. But all your other money should be in a trust for your kids or whatever. And you should also have, you know, a separate account where nobody has access to it. Nobody knows even how much for fucking in it but you. Okay, so if you plan to go into the music business or any other kind of business and you're going to have a manager, please keep those things in mind. You sign all checks. So in this instance, you know, she the latest report that just came out the other day is he was granted temporary spousal support um, until further just investigation is made or whatever they move further along in the process he'll be getting thirty thousand dollars a month she had to pay a retroactive to september of last year which was one month after the documentation to separate was filed and some attorney's fees for a total of two hundred and thirty five thousand dollars she had to give due to check okay so that was just this past week now what's going to happen after that i don't know But I just wanted to point out that, you know, this is the time if you have a family member who's in an industry where people can can uh, victimize them, you guys need to take better care of your relatives, your friends, you know, you don't let them be in this emotional situation like this and have some smooth talking slickster come along and make them believe that they're in love. What they really they don't have nobody in love with them. What they really have is somebody who's peeping opportunities into their wallet. That's all this guy was doing. Unfortunately, poor Mary, you know, got caught up. But she's such a talented lady. I think that uh, having been through everything that she's been through, uh, I'm just really hoping that she comes out on top on the other side without being very you know very much bothered by it a good movie or a good you know another hit album and she'll recoup all this money from that she may have lost from this knucklehead and go on about her business and be happy but uh you know as i heard they had a a prenup but it wasn't signed 
uh, you know, it wasn't like a professionally done one where it was like notarized and signed and at an attorney's office and all this old stuff. So it's going to be very difficult for her to enforce. Again, game. Um, unfortunately, she did not know that she should not be trying to come up with a legal document with sign, you know, signing. Even though he was her husband, that they are going to be her husband, that means nothing. This is just a nigga after your millions. I don't give a fuck. So those, those are my my uh, warnings about women with resources getting with these men who are slick talkers and don't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. Sitting up there with two babies and an ex-wife, you supporting all the motherfuckers, and he's gonna have the nerve to come after you for a hundred and something thousand dollars a month, talking about so he can live the lifestyle that he's used to living. Motherfucker, get a job. Go out there and get some of them clients that you claim you're such a big hot shot rep, rep and manager. Go and get you some clients and pimp them. That would be your best suggestion. Deb Cooper for SurvivingDating.com. Signing out. Now that you've seen some of the grade A content that's offered on the Debsterism channel by advice columnist and author Deborah Cooper, please become a subscriber. Just click the subscribe button below, then click the little bell symbol that you'll see. By doing that, you'll be sent notifications directly to your cell phone right after new content is uploaded. So you can be one of the very first people to see the new videos and to comment on them. So please like, please subscribe, please comment, and please share a link and tell a friend. If you can do all those things, I'll love you.